Hey everyone, my name is Lily and we need to talk about Babel. If you don't know who I am, I'm the book blogger behind Utopia State of Mind and I've loved R.F. Kuang's work pretty much since before The Poppy War came out. I read an early arc of The Poppy War and I loved it to pieces. I'm a mega fan of The Poppy War, like that series. When people ask what my favorite series are, that one comes up like immediately. I love that one so much. I think I have, I only seven yeah seven i have seven copies um arm kuang i have what was i thinking i i'll link the video below where i talk about authors where i have the most of their books on my shelf um let's see for arm kuang i have seven of just the poppy war series i got two of babel and i think i have four copies of babel pre-ordered I, let's talk about Babel then. I am a big fan. I read an arc of Babel and I was just floored. Like I had to, it was one of those books where you want to savor it because you realize it is so gorgeous, but at the same time, you cannot stop reading it. Like I need to do a reread basically before Babel even comes out because of how much I loved it. Babel has become like a facet of my personality, basically. It is one of those books which so accurately like reached into my soul and was like, I know what you want. I know what you like. Let me give it to you. And this is it. Um, I've been posting my Babel review in pieces on Instagram because Instagram would not let me post my full review of Babel. I wrote an essay about Babel. I remember I was talking with my friend um, Katie. I will link Katie's Instagram below, the Shrieking Stack. And Katie was like, oh, have you written your review for Babel? And I was like, no, but you know, I loved it. And then um, I wrote it, like I did, wrote it down in my notes app on my way to dinner and like, bam, all of it basically down. I added some paragraphs because I couldn't help it. Um, but this that was basically it. But Babel, like I, <laughs> I was obsessed with Babel before I got Babel. I knew it was going to like utterly wreck my heart. I was obsessed with Babel since I've read it and before it's been out and I will probably be obsessed with Babel for the rest of my life. It has just completely like captured my heart weeks and probably I think months now after finishing it. Yeah, months. I can't get over it. Like I cannot get over how much I love Babel. Um, it has been, it's just so thought provoking to the entire like core of my being. This is just a video related entirely to Babel and my thoughts. Um, if you read my review, and I will link my review um, when it goes live, but it hasn't gone live yet. This is a sneak peek of my review. Um, it is just so fabulous. It like, I made this joke when I was reading The Ark of Babel, like it being single-handedly more thought-provoking and critically invigorating than like my entire um, career uh, in college. I, how much do I mean that? Um, no comment, no comment. But basically, like, Babel is one of the perfect examples of dark academia, mostly because it so cleverly and, like, intricately explores academia. This, like, elitism within it and also this um, distance we have, you know, where you do studies on, like, poverty or you do discoveries, discoveries, or you do studies on racism or sexism and everything like that, but you're doing it from a very, like, far lens and that distance that distance is a lot and so one of my favorite lines actually from my Babel review and I have it on my computer so I can try to stay on track and not make this a Babel fan video for 20 minutes but is that it talks about the violence of academia and specifically translation which I'll talk about later but the violence of academia and profiting off of the suffering of other people and also sometimes I don't know how about how you feel Sometimes I can get very frustrated with how much academia has to say and how little it has to offer for solutions. I'm just gonna let that like drift off into the distance. Sometimes that's how I feel. And a babel like expertly like digs its knife into that, into that sore spot. Um, the ways in which, as I, I'm reading it from my review, the ways in which racism is so deeply ingrained into the fabric upon which students sit. Because like, come on. Re academia has a long history of being both racist and sexist being like queer phobic as well like it has such a deep basis about who gets to study and what do we get to study what is considered canon what is considered worthy of being studied like all of those questions are so 
ingrained in all of these isms, right? Sexism, racism, um, queer phobia, like all of those. All of that is so deeply ingrained in academia and the struggles and like the changes in academia and the progress still has to happen. Like Babel is just one of the best, actually the best, the best explanations, but also like examples I can think of dark academia and like the darkness of academia not just like you know like a school in a distance with some shadows and some atmospheres maybe some murder some vagueness some like mood it's not like a moody academia this is like dark academia in the darkness of academia in the bad in academia like it is just such a fantastic way that talks about that and additionally the way that um Kwong talks about violence in translation and the way that we lose meaning when we translate words, like just, oh, 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 it got to me. It like gave me chills when I thought about that. And the way that translation is in essence an act of violence, like we have this unavoidable loss that happens when we translate it. And when we lose like the nuances of a word and we translate it into something else. And a lot of, and to be frank, a lot of like translation and specifically a lot of translation, I feel like in the you know, days of colonization, were acts of violence. Like, it is just, both of these themes, the dark academia and the translation, just like in my mind, they like stroke my brain and they're just like, oh, so invigorating. I just, I can't get over it. But also the racism that Babel um, interrogates is just like, I just, I don't, I don't have any words. As like an Asian person, Babel just like, like, oh. I can't actually describe it. It reached into my soul and was like, I'm coming for you. Like, I'm coming for your soul. Because Babel talks about not only institutional racism, but it talks about the insidious racism of like you being in mostly white communities. And this happened for me as well as a transracial adoptee in mostly white communities where like, they're like, you're not like the other people. You're not like the other, you know, Asian people. You're not like the other whatever people. So it's like you're held up not only as an example, but also an example like in contrast, in opposition, in juxtaposition, and all of those different things. And it's very much a bad place to be in. And it's, it's racism. Like it's one of those backhanded compliments where it's like, you work really hard because you're not like everyone else. And that's, those are the comments that Robin gets in Babel. And it's also the comments that like Rami and um, Victoire also get. Like it is the comments that these um, BIPOC main characters and just in characters in general are getting. And like the way that white people don't get it. I just like, I can't. Some of the, some of the white people in this book, like mm, I can't, I can't. I had a few like TikToks drafts that I had to delete where I ranted about it because they were too spoilery but like please so suffice it to say Babel like I've talked about dark academia I've talked about translation I've talked about racism um I'll talk about other things too don't worry um but all of those three things like were just this like little trident that just impaled my soul one of my favorite um lines as well about this specific topic in my review was that I talk about since I am a transracial adoptee, I talk about the experience that I had where someone asked me if I considered myself to be a person of color. And I was kind of just like so shocked that something that has so deeply impacted my life and the way that I think about myself and the way that other people perceive me and like being asked if I think of myself like that and being like, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, that kind of experience, but also, um, I love this line that I put down, which is this balancing act between tentative acceptance because our existence is, is an exception to the rule. I like, I, there are a few, there are rarely times where I'm like, okay, I'm a good review writer, but Babel is the exception. Like I am so proud of my review for Babel. Please read it because I just like poured my entire heart in it. I love this review so much. Um, but the last theme I wanted to talk about was the way that Babel talks about resistance, which to me is the most plot based of that. Like I talk about all the themes that I loved. I talk, look, the characters are fantastic. Robin, man, like Robin, Robin is so fantastic. Um, also these other characters in it, which I'm not going to name all the characters, but the way that they have to talk about 
their own personal resistance and their own personal stake and their own personal um, room for development, honestly, is really, really fabulous. The characters are such an important part of it. And I think like action wise, action paced adventure wise, resistance and the idea of resistance is me the most plot based mostly because Kwong asks readers about the balance between uh, survival and dignity, between resistance and change, um, between what does it mean for like our personal stakes of resistance, I guess. And so um, what I love is that, you know, deeply admired in the Orientalism, the racism and the colonization perpetuated by the British Empire um, within this historical fiction fantasy, how do you escape a cycle of such violence? A cycle where like, the only thing that is is respected is violence and is like being after un undercutting people like the only way where you know we have to fight for our rights and fight for our existence and the way that violence seems to be like the only thing that is respected how do you fight against that cycle how do you find your place within that violent cycle i'm gonna say violent a lot i know in my review i say it a lot too but you know i've said violent a lot probably will say it a lot more but what I loved was that Babel really asks us what methods of rebellion we have or what can we do to rebel um, within the plot. And so that's another reason and probably the final reason that I really love Babel because um, along with the themes, which honestly, I'm a theme person. I love themes. Like if you give me a good theme, I'll excuse a lot of other things, but Babel delivers great themes, fantastic characters, and also action, intrigue, and mystery. Like it balances them all. And so what I loved, it just, what I loved is Babel. It's just all of Babel. Um, so I know that I had to do a specific video dedicated just to Babel and just to how much I love it, because honestly, I can make tons and tons of videos about how much I love Babel. So hopefully this helps you um, decide that you want it and would like to pre-order copies with me because I've pre-ordered a lot. I pre-ordered a lot. Um, uh, I feel like if I tell you all the ones I pre-ordered, it's a little bit spoilery, but um, the ones I can say is that I pre-ordered um, the Illuma Crate one, the Fox and Wit, oh my god, the Fox and Wit Jack is so cute. It's actually more than cute. I don't know why I said cute. It is so gorgeous. Um, a Harvard Bookstore copy, and these ones come with character cards. Harvard Bookstore has two character cards. Mysterious Galaxy has two character cards. I'm pretty sure that I have another one coming in a different subscription box. I cannot say yet. Uh, I can tell people if they're interested in the comments, but I, I won't say in the video because it's spoilery. Um, and that's all I think I have for now, but I'm probably forgetting some. Because I really love this book. Anyway, that was my rant about Babel. I'm glad we could chat about it. Please let me know in the comments below if you're excited for Babel. Also, let me know in the comments before if you've read The Poppy War. It is definitely... A different vibe than the poppy war for sure because not only because this is historical fiction fantasy and yes the poppy war is also parts of it are historically accurate and it is also fantasy but it's very different okay um i don't really know how better else to describe it like i think if you love the poppy war you can still really love babel but i do think that don't go into babel thinking it will be exactly like the poppy war because it won't be but it is fabulous. I love how um, RF Kuang is so able to kind of jump from different aspects of the genre or different genres entirely um, to, you know, different ones. Um, and Babel is a fantastic example of that. So I love Babel. Join me in the Babel Appreciation Club. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a really great day, week, month, or year in terms of your reading. And let me know. Um, Keep me posted on your Babel thoughts. I'm here. I'm here for all the screaming about Babel. Okay.